Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about the reasons why we think you should at least consider using other people's money for your refurbishments. If you don't know who I am, my name is Josh Harrison and along with my wife we do buy to let property investing predominantly and in particular we do the buy refurbish rent refinance model. So the idea of a refurbishment is very common on this channel. And that said, if you're relatively new here and you're wondering what we're on about, then if you feel free to see the iCard on the screen now, the link in the description or wait to the end of the video, you'll see I have left a link to the playlist that I produced over a year ago now. I do admit it's not the most exciting, but it does give you the very much the facts and the principles of how our business model works. Um, you feel free to check that out. It'll give you some context. In fact, I would suggest almost all of our videos dovetail at some point back to those key principles. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it. I would recommend that to you. And if you really want the condensed version because time is tight, then feel free to look at episodes four to seven. That should pretty much cover it for you. But we're going to assume, you understand, we need a refurbishment. The, the story for this is going to be, we bought a house for 80, or we're going to buy a house for £80,000. We're going to do a £20,000 refurbishment. And afterwards, the house is going to be the best on the street and going to be worth £120,000. So a refurbishment is really, really important. You're going to need £20,000. And you're going to need that £20,000 from one or two places. It's either going to be from you or it's going to be from someone else. So what I'd like to do is just walk you through how you can get to £20,000. And then I'm going to, at the end, show you the reasons why I think it's worth considering using other people's money. So let's just say we're going to need £20,000 for our refurbishment. But of course, when we go to work, and I'm going to assume that this person is a basic rate taxpayer, that's our um, mentoring client avatar, then a £20,000 in savings is going to mean you're going to have to have deducted from your income, whatever that is, some income tax and national insurance contributions, which means, of course, there's a, a complete deduction of 32%. So for every pound that you earn at work, 32 pence is going to go in taxes and you're going to end up, of course, with 68% that's going to come to you. Or we could say that this is going to be basically one third goes in taxes and two thirds comes to you um, for you to spend. So the question is then, how much do I have to earn to bring £20,000 home or two thirds of my income? Well, it's probably quite straightforward. This is going to be £10,000 for each third. Which then means that the other third, also £10,000, is going to go in taxes. So you earn, altogether, you earn £30,000. One third, or 32%, goes in taxes, and you end up with two thirds, or £20,000 in savings. And that's after a year. And by the way, if you want to check this, you can actually do £20,000 divided by 0.68. And then it gives you about... Um, £29,400, but for round numbers, earn £30,000 as a basic rate taxpayer, net off your expenses, and then you end up with £20,000 after a year. Now, the challenge of that is, you might turn around and say to me, but that does not work in real life, that does not work in reality. You see, in reality, what we have to do is, after we've got that £20,000, we can't just save £20,000 in a year. We have to live for their expenses. We all know about that, right? Now, the research suggests that the average UK person saves £5,403 in a year. That's the, the average, the mean. So let's just say it's £5,000 a year. Let's just say it's 5K per annum. Keeps the maths nice and straightforward. If it's and if it is, if you are able to save the average and you are able to save 5,400, then you're doing a little bit better, a bit less time. But 5,000 pounds in a year, then of course you've actually got to, every year, save 5,000 pounds. It's going to take you four years to get to your 20,000 pound savings pot, which means after four years, you're going to have 40,000 pounds gone in taxes. You're going to have 60,000 pounds gone on living expenses which then means you've now got your £20,000 in savings. £20,000 after four years, assuming you are a basic rate taxpayer, paying 20% income tax and 12% national insurance. That is four years. Now, of course, you might turn around and say to me, well, that actually doesn't account for, for the deposit for the £80,000 house, assuming you're doing a 75% loan to value uh, loan, right? Whatever that might be, bridge or, or mortgage or whatever. So let's just say you're going to double that then. This is now actually going to be more like to get to £40,000. 
for the refurbishment money and for the deposit, it's actually going to be eight years. And I don't know if you knew this, but the average working life of a UK adult is about 36 years. Let's say it's 32 years. That is 25% of your working life to save up enough money for a deposit and for the refurbishment. Which then means, of course, you're really only able in your working life to buy and refurbishment, refurbish four houses. So this is makes you brings it should bring it into perspective. Well, is there an alternative? Well, that's if you do it. And of course, we said about using other people's money. If we can go along to someone, and I've talked about this in previous episodes, so feel free to check those out. And we go and find a Mr. or Mrs. Investor, build a relationship with them and say, look, can I borrow £20,000? They can have it in your bank account within a week, sometimes within a few days. You see, they've already paid taxes on it. And, and most people that we work with are business owners and or have top of their business in the past and are now sort of retired or some retired. And other people have helped them generate income. But they have already got the tax free money and you just then borrow it from them in six months, you can turn a house around and you might only need four years for the deposit rather than eight years. And you can do from four houses to eight houses if you just borrow the, the just the borrowing the um, money for the refurbishment. Now that's what I call, well, that's what we call level one, borrowing and there are actually for, for our methodology four different levels of working with private investor funds if you want to see what those are let me know in, in the comments below and i can add that to my list of videos that we're going to talk about in the next video we're going to talk about how we actually manage to refinance after we've done the refurbishment because that was a question we've had what what does the refinance look like after the refurbishment how do you generate that money and and so stay tuned for that. If you like this, please like it. If you'd like to subscribe, please do, because we've got other videos coming out. These ones I've just mentioned. So hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out. Now you might, one closing thought for you, if you got this far, thanks for watching. You might turn around and say to me, but if I borrow 20,000 pounds from a private investor and stick it into refurbishment, I now have to pay interest on that. Let's just say you borrow 20,000 pounds at 10%. So obviously you now have to find £2,000 to add to your return to them. Where does that come from? But what you need to do is you need to make for sure there's a sufficient spread in the type of house you're looking at to get the right house in the right street in the right area so that you've got enough uplift, enough spread, so that when you come to refinance, you've actually got your £2,000 built into this. And what you really need to do, if you can adjust this slightly, do a £20,000 refurb, but rather than having the house valued at £120,000, actually have the house valued at £122,500. Because three quarters of that extra £2,500 is basically £2,000. So if you do a 75 percent loan to value, you can pull out an extra £2,000 that is your interest to pay back to your investor. Give them £20,000 back, give them £2,000 back, and the likelihood they might want to go and do it again. So there are some reasons that we would consider using other people's money because you can just scale faster. Remember, time is money, and of the two, time is more important than money. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. If you like to subscribe, please do. Go your comments or questions, drop them below. Thanks for watching, thanks for all your support. My name is Josh Harrison, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.